Uh, hello, my name is Adriana Simmons. I am a wildlife shelter operator. I have been doing this for 15 years now, and I would like to show you my little shelter. Uh, my shelter is divided in three areas. We have the nursery where we have the babies and the animals which are in intensive care. Then we have the transition room and the final stage, which is uh, the outside aviaries where they go before the animals are released. Um, so the work I do is a volunteer, self-funded, full-time job. Uh, what I do is I look after injured and orphaned and sick native animals in order to rehabilitate them so they can be released back into the wild. So the first step happens here in the nursery where we have different animals coming in different stages and I have to cater for every one of them according with their age and their condition. So when I have babies, uh, let's say possums or gliders, um, when I get the little tiny ones which we call pinkies, they come here um, to the incubator, uh, which is very handy because I can um, program their temperature and humidity, which helps them uh, develop a little bit better. Then, when they start to open their eyes and grow a little bit of fur, uh, they go to the second stage, which are those uh, plastic baskets, which are very handy. Uh, in these stages, the babies need extra warmth still, so they have electric blankets here underneath, um, so they, they are kept warm. Um, every animal that comes into care has um, a little uh, card with all the information about what happened well, with the animal, why uh, it came into care, the species, the age, uh, and what happened with, with them at the end of the process where they were released and what happened uh, to them. And at the back of the, of the, um, of the uh, card, there is a space to record their progress. So the weight and what's happening uh, during the whole uh, process of rehabilitation. So when the babies start to become more, more fluffy and they uh, are a little bit more active, they come from the cage, uh, from the um, baskets to the top cages. These top cages uh, have a little electric blanket uh, in their nesting boxes because at this stage they still are unable to thermoregulate, so they will have to have a little bit of um, heat in order for them to continue their uh, developing process, because they would be still in mom's pouch or at least in company of mom. 
Um, and then from the moment they are a little bit bigger, they come from the top cages to the bottom ones in which they don't have electric blankets anymore. So they are thermoregulating themselves and that's the last stage uh, within the nursery. Now something very interesting is the configuration of all the enclosures I have is basically the same. Uh, all cages and, and aviaries have a number so I actually know where the animals are. They have this very high piece of equipment which is a plastic bag with the, with the information about each animal, which is very handy because if an animal goes from one cage to the next, it goes the animal and it goes the, the little piece of paper from one, um, from one bag to the next one. So I know exactly where each animal is. Now inside, inside the cages, the configuration is very similar. We have branches are open here. We have branches for them to climb. They need to exercise, develop their balance, um, and you know <clears throat> they need to learn to become a possum or a glider or whatever the animal the species is. Uh, they have a nesting box uh, which they learn to recognize very easily and that's very good because they know that they have a place in which they are protected and from very little is very important to develop that behavior. So they will do the same in the wild when they are released back. Uh, when the animals are babies and they are still missing their mom, uh, I always put a teddy bear, uh, which is very handy. They come and hug it and when they feel threatened or sad, um, they are missing their mom, they come and hug the, their soft toy. Because I cannot be with them 24-7. Uh, the other very important thing I have in if each cage is a container for their formula. Uh, they are lactose intolerant, by the way, so they need special formula. Uh, you can get different ones here in Australia. We're very lucky. Uh, I have a little dish. I, I give them a little bit of oats or nuts or something like that to help them um, to, to supplement their diet. And I don't give them fruits or veggies, even though many people do. I prefer to give them their nat native vegetation. Okay, so this is the second stage uh, of the rehabilitation process. Um, this area I call it the transition room which is the area where the animals come from the nursery and they have the first taste of the outside world. Um, there are a couple of very important things here. Number one, they get their nesting box. So they will be released in a nesting box and whatever I move them from here, they will go with their box. Um, so it will help them after release to adjust and to have a place which is familiar to them so this, here in the transition room, the, um, the distribution of the cages is basically the same. We have their nesting box, we have a container for their water, container for their food, um, their native vegetation with a clean water, which also needs to be changed every day. And something to keep the environmentally friendly ways of doing things around this shelter, um, I have developed this system which is a self a cleaning system uh, where all the waste goes underneath and here I have a worm farm. So all the poo and wee goes through the mesh and the worms um, process everything and cu every couple of years I take a little bit of this beautiful soil for my garden um, and the beauty is that I'm not just um, saving water and time because before that I had to clean every cage every day. It was such a waste of water. Uh, but it also helps to have everything clean. Here you don't feel any smells or flies or anything. This is the way in which nature actually does it. This is a very simple way. Nature of course is much better, much more complex. But this is a gross imitation of 
how nature's, you know, everything is a cycle and everything is recycled, no, nothing is wasted. Um, and in this way, we have recreated a little bit um, this self-composting system for these cages, which is very nice. I actually had to put a mesh on top of the worms to protect the worms, because <laughs> I don't want my worms to be eaten or stepped up on or anything. So, yeah, but it has been very successful, this, this system. Um, the other thing is we have different kind of, um, you know, ropes and branches so the animals don't get bored, they can play. They are ju just like children. They need to be entertained and they need to learn um, to be curious. So it would help them to survive when they are released back into the wild. Now it is important to remember that these animals, even though they look cute, they are not pets. Um, they are wildlife and they are here Re in rehabilitation in order to be released back. So when they come to the transition room, we start the process of dehumanizing. When they are in the nursery, we are very close. They need a mom, I am the mom, and I cuddle them and I kiss them and I, you know, they feel secure and they recognize me as a mom, which is very important because they have lost their mom, which is very traumatic. And many animals come in, you know, very traumatized because they have seen their mom ripped apart, they have spent nights, you know, um, cold, or, you know, they, they, they come very, very traumatized. So when they accept me as a mom, that's a fantastic thing because they feel relaxed, their immune system works, they grow, they thrive. Uh, so at that stage, they need a mom and I am there for them. But we need to keep in mind that this animal needs to be dehumanized and wild before release so they can actually survive. Otherwise, if they go out there looking for me, wanting to come back, they will never survive. So when they come to the transition room, we start to deattach both sides because I also need to prepare myself to letting, let them, letting them go. So in this area, we don't talk much anymore. Um, and like all teenagers, animals as well, they don't, you are not that interesting anymore, you know, and because I pair them, they prefer to be with their friends rather than mom. So it's exactly the same story uh, than humans. So yeah, in, in this, in this uh, a, a period of their times, they, uh, they become more independent and I just come to clean, to give their food, but we don't talk, don't talk much. Uh, there's no cuddles anymore, and uh, they start to develop and be more confident and more active. So that's exactly what we want uh, before release. So these ones are some of the nesting boxes that we use for, for our animals. Um, they're basically the same. Uh, the, the difference is the size of the entrance. It depends on the species. So we have a bigger one for the brush tails. <laughs> Bowie. Uh, a, a small one for the ring tails, um, and even where is it? And even very little tiny entrances for sugar gliders or Fasco gales. So it depends on the species. Uh, these boxes have been donated to me, which I really, really appreciate that because every single animal that comes to this shelter is released with a box. And if you think that I take almost a hundred animals a year, uh, it's a lot of boxes. So these ones were donated and, and different groups have made, it, made them over the years, the Boy Scouts, schools, uh, elderly groups. So that's very, very much appreciated. Otherwise, my husband <laughs> will have to make them for me. So yeah, very, very handy. They are different sizes and different types. Um, so. Uh, we have patterns if people are interested in making boxes for the shelter or your local shelter. Um, you can give us a call or contact Wildlife Victoria and um, you can get the pattern. So, because everyone makes it differently, but there are patterns which are, I think, the best. So, yeah. Uh, this is the last stage of the rehabilitation process. That's stage three. Uh, where the animals come to the outside aviaries. These aviaries are fully exposed to the weather. 
the animals come with their nesting box from the transition room and here they are ready to go. They spend a couple of weeks here just getting used to the noises, the smells, uh, the weather and from here they go back into the wild. So the way we do it is we bring the box to the, uh, the site which we have chosen. We try to release the animals in the same area which they came from and many people who bring the babies to us, we ask them uh, if they would be interested in taking the animals after rehabilitation process and amazingly most people say yes. So we take many animals back to people's gardens or properties and what we do is we make the appointment and we take the nesting box uh, with the animals inside, we plug the entrance of the box and we choose a very nice tree, protected, bushy. Uh, we try to place the box facing south um, and then we just nail uh, the, the nail on, on top. We hang the box and nail at the bottom and, and that's, it's, a, it's a process that takes five minutes or less. Um, and then after a couple of minutes we just unplug the, the box and the animals are completely free. We try to release in the evening before the animals wake up, try to you know, make the cycle normal um, so they have been sleeping during the day and after release they are ready to wake up and, and it is amazing actually to see when they come out and they discover that they are free and you know all the, the um, senses come again and, and it, is, it is actually overwhelming to see their reaction. You, you see their eyes bright and, and they're just having a second chance. Uh, this is, to me, this is very important because most of the animals that come into care come into care because of us, uh, human intervention in some way or another, and we put them in this situation. So it is very important that the least we can do is at least giving them a second chance and lending a hand. So it is, to me, is, you know, all this effort is, is worth it because at the end when you see them going, as healthy, happy animals, uh, able to have a second chance, uh, that's, that's the best payment ever. <laughs>